Hi, in this video we're going to look at representing complex numbers in what's known as an Argan diagram. So here we've got two uh, complex numbers. Let's just look at Z1 for view. Z1 is A plus BI. So if you change A and change B, it will change these. So at the moment we've got two, the real part's two, and the imaginary part is four. Okay, and we've got Z2, C plus DI, the real part being two minus two, and the uh, imaginary, imaginary part of this being uh, 1. Now, you can put complex numbers on what's known as an Argand diagram, where the x-axis is labelled the real part of z, so this represents the real part of the imaginary number, and the y or the vertical axis represents the imaginary part of the complex number. So if we've got this number z1, 2, for i, that means it's two along on the real part and four along on the imaginary part. And this one we've got uh, minus two in the uh, real part and one in the imaginary part. And we can move these around. If you see, if we move them around here, for example, here we've got no imaginary part, so it would just be a, a line of reference to the Point minus two on the x-axis. Now, the um, we're going to look at some of the properties of, of of this. So let's just put it back to where it was. Okay, this applet I will put in the notes of the video the link to it on GeoGebra, so you can um, have a play for yourselves. Now, right. So uh, first we're going to look at is what's known as the modulus. Now the modulus is the length of the vector, which in this case is. 4.47. Uh, now you can get the modulus, it's just a simple application of Pythagoras' theorem. This is the uh, symbol means, it's similar to vectors. Okay, so modulus of Z1 is square root of 2 squared of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. You don't bother with the i, just that's 4, that's 2. So it's just a simple application of Pythagoras to work out the um, uh, the modulus, so the length of the line. Okay, the length will always be posit positive. That's quite simple. Right, so if we add, uh, we go Z1 and then we add Z2, that's like doing this. That's like going along here and then going this length here, this blue one here, will be the same as this one here down the bottom. So we're like going Z1 plus Z2. Uh, 2, so it starts here, goes to here and here, will take me to this point here. So the red line here is how we represent the uh, vector here. So let's just change, um, let's change uh, C doing to be mi uh, minus 3 and then perhaps we can see, there you go. So the red line here represents uh, Z1 plus Z2. Uh, So we can see that we're actually going, uh, the real part will be minus 1 and the imaginary part would be 5. And that's true, you know, if you do minus uh, 2 uh, minus 3, you're going to get minus 1. And then if you do 4 plus 1, you're going to get 5. So that makes sense. Okay, let's have a look now what we mean by Z1 uh, minus Z2. So that's going to be like going... Z1 minus Z2 will be going like in the opposite direction to this one here. So we'll get something like this. This is the uh, minus Z2. Okay, so it's like going Z1 minus Z2. That's that distance there. That will take me to that point there, which is 5 plus 3i. Okay, so that is uh, Z1 minus Z2. And if we let's take that off for a minute, let's take together that one as well, just get rid of the clutter. And this here, let's just change this back to being to minus two. Okay, this one here represents Z1 times Z2, which is minus eight minus six i in this case. So it goes straight away. And what will be quite interesting is if I make uh, Z2 the conjugate of this one here, Okay, so that means it will be uh, a would c would have to be two, and 
d would have to be minus 4. Pipe minus 3. Okay, what we see is that, as we said before, this is represents z1 times z2. We can see that the uh, product of these is, the product of those two, of the conjugate, is actually just a real number. Also, if we remember when we did addition, that's also a real number. I sh when we did the example, when we did z times z star, a z plus a z star, that was also a real number. So it sort of illustrates that point quite clearly. Um, if, if we did the subtraction of z and then took away its conjugate, that would just be a pure imaginary number. Okay, so if you think of it, z1 uh, minus z2 would be this way this time. This would just be a pure imaginary number. Okay, so we can have a look at the conjugate as well. Notice the conjugates are always the same space apart. They're just a reflection in the uh, real axis. Let's just make do another one. Let's make uh, z1 over here. And then, so that means that this one would have to change to be minus three. You can just see that they are going to be one above the other. I one's going to just be a reflection in the other if you're going to represent one of our diagrams. Okay, so this has been a video to show you how to represent uh, complex numbers on Argand diagrams. I hope you've sort of understood and got the main points. Um, and I thank you very much for watching. Again, I just repeat, the uh, applet will be in the notes of the uh, video as a link. Thank you very much for watching.